Hello. In this video series, we will be reviewing all the Waveport models and demonstrating the different installation options each presents. In the next couple of videos, we'll be showing you how to properly install each model to make it as efficient and safe as possible. We highly recommend watching all videos before doing your initial install. The four types of port installations we will cover include a freestanding or pipe wave port installation, a wave port to wave armor dock installation, a wave port to fixed dock or seawall installation, and a wave port to a non wave armor floating dock installation. Let's go over the different models of wave armor ports. SLX models. These PWC ports were the first models on the market to introduce multiple adjustable wheel pockets, allowing PWC owners the ability to customize the wheel configuration, ensuring proper alignment to the hull on their watercraft. The SLX models are designed with molded pockets in all four corners, making them easy to install no matter what installation method is used. Apex 5 and 6 models. These models are the largest drive-on and roll-off jet ski ports on the market, featuring a molded rubber overlay bow stop, tethering chain and clip, and wider wheels to support the larger watercrafts. Dimensionally, they are a foot and a half longer than the SLX models, which make the Apex 5 and 6 perfect for larger PWCs and smaller boats. The Apex Sport. This is an entry-level port designed to accommodate smaller lightweight PWCs such as the Sea-Doo Spark and Yamaha EX models. Pro 5 and 6 models. Introducing the all-new Pro Port series. Pro Ports are a perfect combination of compact SLX series with all the upgrades of the Apex models plus some new features. The Pro Series ports feature a new gradual entrance and a deeper midsection of the port for unmatched drive-on and off performance, making it a perfect fit for the PWC with the deeper hull design. Newly designed wheel pockets allow for precise alignment and 12 wheels of various softness and diameter are strategically placed for maximum hull protection. The Pro port also include exclusive connectors and attachments. Now that we understand the functions of the different models of wave armor ports, let's go over the preliminary tasks and key information you will need to know before you begin any installation. Again, we highly recommend watching all videos for your install before beginning the installation process. There may be some additional materials to acquire. There are several items you'll need to determine before the date of the installation. Number one. Decide which port model best suits your PWC and shoreline requirements. Number two, what type of installation is going to be used based on the PWC size, dock type, water depth, and water conditions. Before you head to the job, you should go through your entire inventory and make sure all of the wave armor components are accounted for and intact. Spending the time to double check and make sure the equipment and product is accounted for and in working condition will save you lost time during the installation process. Depending on your installation, you may need a few extra tools. This could include a bandsaw, a one quarter inch impact driver, a grinder, sockets with extensions and Allen wrench. You will also need a PVC pipe pre-marked in one foot increments, a tape measure, dead blow hammer, 24 inch pry bar, post pounder, modified portable winch, a level, and schedule 40 galvanized pipe. Wave Armor recommends you have a minimum of one and a half inch schedule 40 galvanized pipe. Pipe size should be chosen based on water conditions. Remember, safety should always be the number one priority. To avoid injuries, please wear your protective eye gear and earplugs when necessary. And don't forget about the sunscreen. Now, let's dive into these installation details. In this video, we'll show you how to install a Wave Armor port to a Wave Armor floating dock. Step 1. Identify the location you'd like the Wave port to sit along the dock. Then determine if it should be front mounted or side mounted to the dock. Step 2. Position or install receiving brackets. If you pre-install the receiving brackets during dock assembly, make sure they're in the general area where you're planning to attach the PWC port. 
If there are not already brackets on the dock to connect to, you will have to add them in. If you have a bridge section on your dock, you can quickly attach a bracket there and then move it to the desired location with a dead blow hammer. Alternatively, you can separate two dock sections and add them in. If you have to separate two separate dock sections, one tip to make the process a little easier is to take bolts out of only one side of the dock section. That way, one section will have an H-beam still intact for an easier reinstall. Step 3. Install the appropriate waveport brackets to your waveport. If you're planning on mounting your port frontwards, attach the brackets to the front pocket of the port. If you're planning on mounting your port sideways, attach the brackets into the side pockets on the waveport. Then secure the brackets to your wave port with the impact driver and 9 16 inch socket. If you're installing an Apex Series port perpendicular to the dock, no attachments are necessary since the receiving knuckles are already molded. If you're installing a Wave Pro port, make sure to use the proprietary Pro attachments. Step 4. Move the port. Float the personal watercraft port out to the location where it will be installed. Step 5. Connect port to the dock. Make sure both brackets are positioned correctly to match up with one another. Adjust them with a dead blow hammer if needed. Then secure the provided hardware. Step 6. Adjust the port wheels before docking a watercraft. When properly positioned, your watercraft will ride on the smooth part of the PWC hull, making for a smooth and effortless transition on and off the port. Note, the original position of the wheels are for shipping purposes only and adjustments required for your specific PWC. And that's it. We just completed installing the best wave port in all of the industry. Go Wave Armor! In this video, we'll share with you how to install a freestanding Wave Armor port. Step 1. Identify the location you would like the wave port to sit along the dock. The freestand installation method allows you the flexibility to arrange your port front mounted or side mounted to the dock. Step 2. Install pipe sleeves. Start bolts by hand, then switch to impact driver to install appropriate pipe sleeves that work with your port model in the front two pockets of the wave port. Additional sleeves and pipes can be added for increased stability for rough water conditions. Step 3. Move the port. Float the personal watercraft port out to the predetermined location. Step 4. Measure pipes. Keep in the port in its exact position. Then use a PVC pipe pre-marked in one foot increments and go through the pipe sleeve attachment until you reach the lake bottom. Record the measurement at your water depth. Once you have your water depth measured, add at least 6 feet to that measurement. We recommend adding an additional 6 feet because a minimum of 3 feet is required to secure the pipes into the bottom and 3 feet is needed for the port to move up and down the pipes freely during changing water condition. Note: 3 feet is the minimum for regular water conditions. You might require more than 3 feet depending on the bottom composition and water conditions. Your water depth measurement plus 6 feet is the length you will then cut the pipe to. Measure each pipe position individually. Never assume the depth no matter how close together the brackets may be. Step 5. Cut your pipes with a bandsaw and smooth the edges with a grinder. Step 6. Secure your pipes. Secure the pipes by placing them through the sleeves into the lake bottom. Using a level, make sure the pipe is at a 90 degree angle from the port. Using a manual or powered post pounder, Drive the pipes into the lake bottom until there is 3 feet of pipe left from the top of the port. If you measure correctly, there will be the required 3 feet of pipe into the lake bottom. Step 7. Double check any exposed pipes to ensure there are no sharp edges. Then place decorative post covers over the pipes to soften the feel and enhance the overall appearance. Solar lights can be added to the hex and heritage post covers. Not all installations will have these. Step 8. Adjust the port wheels before docking a watercraft. When properly positioned, your watercraft will ride on the smooth part of the PWC hull, making for a smooth and effortless transition on and off the port. Note: The original position of the wheels are for shipping purposes only and adjustments required for your specific PWC. And that's it. 
we just completed installing the best wave port in all of the industry. Go Wave Armor! In this video, we'll share with you how to install a Wave Armor port to a non Wave Armor floating dock system. Step 1 Determine the location of the port. Identify the location you would like your personal watercraft port to sit. Then determine if it should be front mounted or side mounted on the dock. Step 2 Install the appropriate wave port brackets to your wave port. Start bolts by hand, then switch to impact driver to install the wave port brackets on your port. Install the port brackets into the front two pockets if you're planning on mounting your port frontwards. If you're planning on mounting your port sideways, install the port brackets on two side pockets. If you're installing a Pro Series, attach the poly brackets into the front pockets on the port using the provided hardware. Step 3. Attach the brackets to the dock. Attach the 19 and 3 quarter or 25 and 3 quarter channels to the floating dock at the location where you would like your port to sit. Put the fasteners in the correct height for the port to remain level. Having fasteners at the incorrect level can cause preloaded at the front, which is when the back of the port sits higher which will make it harder to roll on and off your PWC. You'll need to use a minimum of five fasteners for each channel to the floating dock. These fasteners are not provided. Remember, every floating dock is different, so you may need some additional lumber or materials to secure the channels to the floating dock. Step four, attach your wave port. Float the personal watercraft port out to the location it will be attached to the dock. Position the wave port to align with the secured C channels and attach with the provided hardware. Step 5. Adjust the port wheels before docking a watercraft. When properly positioned, your watercraft will ride on the smooth part of the PWC hull, making for a smooth and effortless transition on and off the port. Note: The original position of the wheels are for shipping purposes only and adjustments required for your specific PWC. And that's it. We just completed installing the best wave port in all of the industry. Go Wave Armor! In this video, we'll show you how to install a Wave Armor port on a fixed stock system. Step 1. Determine the location of the port. Identify the location you'd like your personal watercraft port to sit. Then determine if it should be front mounted or side mounted to the dock. Step two, install pipe sleeves on the port. Fasten a pair of pipe sleeve with the appropriate pipe diameter for your installation into your wave port using the provided hardware. Install the pipe sleeve in the front two pockets if you're planning on mounting your port frontwards. If you're planning on mounting your port sideways, install the pipe sleeves on two side pockets. If you're installing a Pro Series port, the pipe sleeves are unique to the Pro, but the procedure is the same. Step 3. Attach dock brackets to the dock. To do this, you must first determine whether you want to use a Z-bracket or telescoping bracket. Z-brackets keep the wave port close to the dock, while telescoping brackets are adjustable brackets that allow the user to increase the distance between the wave port and the dock. After choosing the bracket type, attach the bracket where the port will sit on your dock. You will need to use a minimum of four fasteners for each bracket you place on your dock. These fasteners are not included because every fixed dock is different. You may need some additional lumber or materials to secure these bracket to the fixed dock. Step 4. Attach your wave port. Move the personal watercraft port into position. Then secure the wave port to the lake using pipes. Drive the pipes until they are at least two feet into the lake bottom. Once the pipes are secure to the lake, use the U-bolts to connect the pipes to the dock bracket. Step five, adjust the port wheels before docking a watercraft. When properly positioned, your watercraft will ride on the smooth part of the PWC hull, making for a smooth and effortless transition on and off the port. Note, the original position of the wheels are for shipping purposes only and adjustments required for your specific PWC. And that's it. We just completed installing the best wave port in all of the industry. Go Wave Armor! 